So we're talking football now on the Sportsmax Zone. 27 teams from North America and the Caribbean will begin their journey toward qualifying for the 2025 FIFA Men's Under-20 World Cup when they take part in first-round qualifying action starting on Friday. The first phase of the qualifying will conclude on the 4th of March. The teams have been placed into six groups, three groups of five teams and three groups of four to be played in different countries. Let's have a look. Uh, the groupings, Group A, Cuba, Nicaragua, Belize, British Virgin Islands, and Anguilla. Group B has El Salvador, Antigua and Barbuda, Suriname, Guyana, Turks, and Caicos Islands. The Group C teams are Guatemala, Curaçao, Aruba, St. Martin, that's French St. Martin, and Barbados. The team contest. TNT, who have made under-20 World Cup. And Dominica. Yeah, there's Group D with Canada, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and, uh, and Dominica. Over in Group E, we have Haiti, Puerto Rico, St. Kitts and Nevis and the Cayman Islands. And in Group F, Jamaica, Bermuda, Grenada and Martinique. Now, the top six teams from the tournament will join the six seeded teams. The United States, Honduras, Mexico, Panama, Costa Rica, and the Dominican Republic for this summer's CONCACAF Under-20 Championship, from which four teams will advance to the FIFA Men's Under-20 World Cup in Chile. Let's start our look ahead to the first round of qualifying by featuring Group F, which will be played in St. Kitts and Nevis, and specifically zoning in on Grenada, who recently named their 21-man squad. Let's have a chat with their under-20 coach, former Grenada international, Anthony Modest. Anthony, welcome to the Sportsman Zone. It's a pleasure to have you, the former Portmore United man. How are you doing these days? It's a pleasure being here. Um, I'm doing fine. I'm doing great. Uh, looking forward to the tournament. Yeah, it's great to have you. Do you miss Jamaica? And Portmore United. Definitely, yeah. Um, <laughs> Good job, because my second home. Uh, <laughs> you, you never know. I, my jersey back uh, says Portmore in the portion area. You never know. Yeah, you never know indeed. Well, let's talk about the job that you have at the moment, and that's the national under-20 job. Um, big period coming up, the 24th, the 26th, and the 28th, as you try to make it to the CONCACAF under-20 championship this summer. Talk to me about the preparation of this squad that you have. How long have you been preparing, and how satisfied are you with where the team is at entering the tournament? We've been in preparation stage since last September. Uh, we focus a lot on the physical aspect of the football. Um, we know the quality of opponents we, we, we will be up against. And we think being a fit bunch and at the end being technically sung and having a good game plan, we can work on that. I know, I know when, and whenever you get to a group with Jamaica and Trinidad, I'm sorry, Jamaica and Matt, they more or less look as the underdog. But we are very confident. We, the group of guys, we have the local, and we, we have introduced, we will be introducing five foreign-based players, quote-unquote foreign-based players, to join, to join the squad, which will help enhance the squad, and help strengthen the squad. We are very confident we can go all the way in this group. Yeah, talk to me about how you went about selecting those foreign-based players. So you have a group of local base players. Were you looking for specifics in, in terms of areas that you felt you were weak? And if so, what were those areas? And kind of walk us through what went into the selection process, specifically with those foreign based players. Well, first of all, I must say the, the number of guys we got from overseas that were interested in participating or, or representing the country it was a, a huge amount. Um, when we looked at our, our local boys, we thought they were good enough. Uh, we looked at areas specifically, if we thought need strengthening. We, we have scouts on the other side that went to local players. Matter of fact, um, Shari Joseph, our past player, new revolution player, he, he was one of the guys that identified players he think 
that could help because that player played on the end for a few years in the New York Revolution. And Charlie and I grew up together, so I, I trust his word. The, the association trusts his word because we know he's a guy of talent. He cannot identify talent. And with that being said, we had other people that went out scouting on our behalf. So when the pool came in, the pool of names that came in, and we saw where we thought we need strengthening, we, we zoomed in on those guys and then got them over to us. Yeah, and based on the group that you're drawn in, I know you mentioned when you're in a group with Jamaica and Martinique, which team do you think will be your biggest opponent, your biggest hurdle? The, the three teams in the zone. The three teams in the zone. Um, I think if, if you are, are drawn in a zone, it therefore means you have some quality, you have something in you in the football aspect. Um, we know Jamaica, quote unquote, is powerhouse in the Caribbean when it comes to football, maybe at all levels. But we are not taking anyone lightly. We, we see everyone as a threat. As a matter of fact, we see ourselves as a threat if we do not do what we're supposed to do. Yeah. But um, yeah, we see everyone as a threat. And on February 24, you have your opening match against Bermuda. Any area that you and the boys need to work on, you know, tighten up just to ensure that you pick up those first winning points? Yeah, well, um, we, we have to get the game plan more more settled in. We, we've been doing some work concerning the game plan, and we have a few more work to do. I can't, can't say much because I'll be giving out <laughs> too much information, but um, we are working on our game plan. We, we look at, at our opponents. Uh, we think it's three points we can, we can gain in the first match. And we are going all out. As we say, we normally say we take one game at a time. And right now, we're just focusing on, on Bermuda. What we have to do, what we think we can do to get three points and what we think we can do to stop them from scoring. Yeah, Anthony, um, the Jamaica team, they came off recently a tour of Trinidad and Tobago where they played a couple of practice matches against the TT on the 20 side. They also played the under 23 unit of one of the TTFA premiership sides there. Um, how much experience does your squad have in terms of practice matches in the last six or seven months, if any at all? Yeah, it seems as if we've lost Anthony Modest, um, Lance and Mariah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we hope that we can, can get him back soon. Um, hopefully it's just a temporary... Um, dropout for Anthony Modest because I'm keen to get from him his overall feeling on on teenage football talent in the Caribbean because for the most part we feel in many different sports that at the teenage level Caribbean athletes are comparable to some of the best athletes in the world whatever the sport is it's that it's that transition transition from juniors to seniors that the gap begins to widen so there is the general feeling that at the teenage level, in many instances, not in all instances, but the Caribbean is better placed to challenge, you know, international level competition than, you know, when players get to their early 20s and so on. And I'm keen to hear Anthony on, on that because it, it, is, it is a view that, that we have held, you know, as, as sports enthusiasts for a long time. Yeah, um, yeah I've, I've heard... I've heard that, Lance, um, I, and I think in instances, and more so for me on an individual level, yes, it can be true. I'm not convinced that generally it is true on a on a team level. Yeah, um, and I think it it also varies depending on the sport. So I think it could very well yeah. be true in cricket. Is yeah. it true in football? Yeah. I'm not sure. But yeah. hey, I think, yeah, we, I think have we have Anthony, Anthony Morris back. back. Yeah. Anthony, um, yeah, sorry that you dropped out just now, but I, I wanted to ask you the question about um, under-20 footballers in the Caribbean and their ability to compete with the best in CONCACAF and even beyond that, internationally, because we feel that it is that transition from junior to senior sport that the Caribbean misses out. In other words... Um, a lot of our 21, 22-year-olds are further behind the eight ball than they may have been internationally when they were 17 or 18 years old. What's your view on that? Yeah, I share the same sentiment. I think, um, I've said in previous interviews, I think our young guys need to go out very early. 
Uh, we have the talent at the school level, they are brilliant. And then there's this gap between the school level, the U23s, and the senior. We need to uh, find a way to get our players on the outside, where they can play football on a regular basis. Every Sunday, they play a competitive game. They train in a, a professional outfit daily before a game. And once we get that kind of exposure, we will see the growth of our, our football. We will see that true potential. Because some of us in the Caribbean, as young boys, we treat, we treat the game more as a sweat. And we have to get the mindset, the professional mindset. And once we do that, we can go out. We definitely see the, the true potential. Yeah, because the point I wanted to make as well is that, you know, decades ago, I think Trinidad and Tobago had been the first team to qualify for the under-20 World Cup from as a CARICOM country in 1991 with players like Dwight York and Angus Eve and, and Jaron Nixon. The Jamaicans did qualify some time after for the under-20 World Cup as well. But there hasn't been that growth. You know, you would think that in 1991, if TNT could have done it, it would have inspired the kind of infrastructure and ambition from other CARICOM countries to to achieve those levels. But there, as you're mentioning, Anthony, there is this gap with uh, professionalizing our 19, 20-year-olds to, um, with, with help needed from the authorities, I must say, because it's not just on the players themselves to advance themselves to that level. Yeah, definitely. Um, we, I, as you will know, um, so the, the Caribbean is full full of talent, raw, raw talent. But the talent need to be enhanced. The, the, the different associations need to go out there and look something for the guy, if I should say so. Find clubs, send them in one week training, send them one three week. Sometimes it may not just be on trials, but just to go out there and experience the whole atmosphere of professionalism, proper professionalism. Um, it will also help these guys to give them the boost, the boost to go forward, the encouragement. Because we have a number, or we had a number of guys in the Caribbean that went out. The Latter P, the York, the, the Ricardo Gardner, even the Bailey now. And it should serve as incentives for our young ones, but for some reason, we, we are not following up. And I think with the help of the local associations, with the push, the drive to the young ones, the young ones can go there and make it. Yeah, Anthony, I, I also wanted to get an understanding of what your match preparations have been like heading into um, this this tournament. We play a number of squad matches among ourselves, and the senior national team came out in training, and we've been having games against the senior national team. So most of the games we played are more local-based games against the senior national team and against among ourselves. Yeah, does that concern you that you haven't been able to, as a unit, play matches against other national teams or national youth teams? Definitely, it's it's a concern because um, we we wanted where they could, could go out of the environment, out of the comfort zone, and experience something differently. It didn't happen. It's a concern, but it's something. It's what on the bridge more or less. Um, we just have to try now and motivate them and get them focused to do the job from next week. Yeah, well, Anthony, we wish you all the very best in the tournament. You have some pretty experienced players coming from well-named clubs and universities. So there is some quality and experience there. And we wish you all the very best in the tournament. Take care. Thank you. Take care. All right, Anthony Modest, coach of Grenada's national under-20 team, getting ready for the first phase of uh, CONCACAF qualifying they are trying to get to the CONCACAF championship this summer and ultimately the FIFA under 20 World Cup. Let's go to a break. We'll be back with more after this.